To give us a sense of how the vaccination program is going, because it started off at a glacial pace and now it's uh, really, really being ramped up. So um, we continue to ramp up our vaccination program. I think, um, you know, we are fortunate that we've already procured over 6 million vaccines, which would go up to 8 million. We have about 16,000 vaccinators and we're currently doing it in about 200 vaccination sites. So keeping that in mind, I think uh, our pace is good. We've completed 2.5 million vaccines and we continue to do over 15,000 vaccination in each of our uh, Taiwan cities per day. So, so I think that for us, the pace will continue. And um, uh, on the government, yes. Sunita, I, I want to get a sense of, you know, we've got this Delta variant and also uh, Delta Plus as well. Uh, give us an idea of the efficacy of these vaccines against these new strains and uh, tell us a little bit about whether you're seeing any evolution or further mutations of COVID-19. You know, I think it's very difficult at this time to predict what mutations could happen. But having seen the Delta Plus and also having seen the efficacy of the, of the vaccine on people who've had the Delta Plus, we've not really seen any mortality for those who have been vaccinated, who, especially those who've got two vaccines. So I, you know, I think we're in a good place if we manage to vaccine as many people as we can. Uh, Sunita, as India braces for a possible third wave, what do you think are some of the key lessons for the uh, hospital industry in India? I think we're very well prepared for the third wave. The, the second wave was quite devastating in the sense that, uh, you know, the huge number of people who got COVID was, uh, was significantly higher. So what we've done is really... We've looked at creating additional infrastructure in the sense that our bed allocation will go up. We've also taken on hotel rooms. So we have about 18,000 hotel rooms to add to our capacity. We've bridged the manpower gap. Uh, we've trained nurses and doctors, upskilled them to use ventilators. We've procured equipment uh, for, the, for the second wave, which will be most useful in the third wave. And most importantly, people were talking about, you know, our supply chain is intact, whether it's oxygen, medicines. Um, I think the entire supply chain is intact. So we should be in a much better position to handle the wave, third wave. Uh, if it comes and, and we're quite certain it will not be as severe as the second wave. Uh, Sunita, for the healthcare sector, does Apollo Hospital see uh, any M&A opportunities? What might you be interested in? So yes, uh, we're constantly on the lookout for M&A opportunities. Uh, for us as Apollo, I think we have a very large established network. So we are looking at acquisitions to complete and strengthen the, the network. So these will be bolt-on acquisition and some brownfield opportunities. Okay, Sunita, when you, when you look at, uh, you know, the whole sort of, I suppose, uh, hospital industry there in, in India, do you think it is ripe that you may or may not get involved, but is it ripe for consolidation now? Yes, I think it's, um, you know, consolidation is already happening, so... To say is it ripe? <laughs> yes, I think it's ripe. And uh, consolidation has happened. Uh, but I think this is also the time to make more investments into healthcare because uh, more than ever, this crisis has taught us that uh, investments into healthcare are very necessary. There is a huge demand supply gap. Investments into training of manpower are hugely necessary. We have uh, 1.5 doctors per thousand. So upskilling nurses, investing in training of manpower and uh, investing in infrastructure, which I hope the government has started to look at it in a positive way, will definitely benefit the healthcare sector and the population at large. Uh, Sunita, just one final question before we let you go. We know that your pharmacy unit is now a wholly owned unit. Are there plans to raise capital for this unit? So right now, um, sufficient to say that we have enough capital. 
Uh, we did a capital raise earlier, and uh, and we do have you know free cash flows that will help us grow this unit. But having said that, um, you know we are looking at creating value for all of Apollo stakeholders. So there has been uh, interest from both strategic and financial investors, and we we'll, we'll you know talk more about it in the next quarter.